Hello, Archimu agents. This is Sherry Jones, the Decipher from Archimu headquarters. I'm here to deliver you your brief. This week, we will be discussing games as art forms and game genres as lenses. So let's get started. The first question that we should address is probably, why should we study video games? After all, we will be spending 10 weeks at RGMU headquarters studying about the subject. Is it worthwhile as a pursuit? So let's answer that. Since the advent of Atari and Famicom platforms, and in case if you're not familiar with those two terms, they refer to the first two platforms ever created for video games. Now, since the invention of those two platforms, most scholars have long dismissed video games or digital games as worthwhile objects for intellectual pursuit. Many scholars associate digital games with child's play that is neither complex nor influential on social and cultural changes. Many of digital games is ignored due to the perception of digital gaming as a frivolous activity. Yet today, gamers are everywhere, and let me show you how. Recent explosion of social games such as Angry Birds, Candy Crush Saga, Bejeweled, etc., which is appearing not only on social media, but on mobile devices now, has turned Facebook, Google+, and other social media users into digital gamers. Today's online social culture is entwined with a gaming culture. What that means is, as long as you're using a social media, it's very likely like you're playing games with your friends too, to be social. If digital games are mere child's play, why do we, the adults, feel the strong need to play video games as well? So the next question that's natural is why do we play? Why do we do that at all? The inherent characteristic of play in digital games is precisely what makes digital games such unique objects for study. Some of the questions that generate from the idea of play is, first, what does it mean to play? What are we trying to do when we are playing? Meaning, is there a purpose to what we're trying to do? Are we trying to achieve a particular goal? How are digital games affecting us? Whether emotionally, physically, is there any effect at all? So, the next question that follow is, what is the meaning of it all? What is the meaning of digital games? More questions to consider given digital games rising popularity. Question, do digital games convey deeper meanings than its playful surface? Are digital games cultural artifacts with social influence? How are digital games compelling us to keep playing? I want you to hold on to these questions as we discuss more of these concepts through. So, just what is so attractive about digital games? What is it that makes us want to keep playing them? There has been a recent argument that's forwarding the idea that games are actually art forms. So, if we're going to talk about games as art forms, we need to first define what art is. So here is the definition of art by a poet. One of the great functions of art is to help us imagine what it is like to be not ourselves, what it is like to be someone or something else, what it is like to live in another skin, what it is like to live in another body, and in that sense to surpass ourselves, to go out beyond ourselves. That was by Adrian Rich. So the idea is to be somebody else, to be something else through art. Okay, so think about this example. Have you ever played Zelda? If you play Zelda, you probably played as Link. Link is not you, but you are playing as Link to venture into a land that's complete fantasy. Now here's a definition of art defined by an art historian. He says, the creation of illusions, an indulgence of sensuousness, the exhibition of skill, a desire to convey meanings, an indulgence in fantasy, and training in the perception of reality. That was by Dr. Robert J. Belton. So, perception of reality. If any of you have played Final Fantasy, 
and this one is to happen to be five. You know that there is a bird in Final Fantasy called the Chocobo. Chocobo do not really exist, but I still miss writing on a Chocobo. Now, game art, as defined by Game Scholar, so those who are arguing for the idea that game, games are art. Here's the quote. Most of all, all art forms have the ability to portray meaning, evoke emotion, inspire, or stimulate the imagination. Not all definitions of art will fit these ideas, but with these three, it can be clearly seen that games are art. So specifically, he's saying that art, um, art forms do the following, portray meaning, evoke emotion, inspire or stimulate the imagination. And that was by Sean Hamilton. Well, anyone play Kirby before? Considering that, again, it is a heroic circle that flies on stars. None of that actually makes sense in reality, but somehow in a game world, that makes sense. And it does make us feel certain emotions as well. Next, game art as defined by Art Curator. So on the unique experience of digital games as non-flat or multi-layered art objects, quote, if you look at another, look at other exhibits about games, there's a blown up still from Metal Gear Solid. It might look cool, but in the end, you're just looking at it. You can look at it all you want, but you're flattening the experience, he continues. Together, games become greater than their parts. So he's suggesting there that games are not two-dimensional. There's many layers to a game. And that was by Chris uh, Melisinos. Okay, so now that we have discussed probable uh, arguments for games as art, we need to go ahead and discuss game genres or game lenses. Okay, so what is a game genre? According to Wikipedia, a game genre is defined by a set of gameplay challenges. They are classified independent of their setting or game world content, unlike other works of fiction such as films or books. Most video game features feature obstacles to overcome, so video game genres can be defined where obstacles are completed in substantially similar ways. So two key terms, challenges and obstacles, define genre. Okay, so game genre essentially are a type of lens to see the world, and because they are types of lenses to see the world, they are also providing us with new perspectives. So game genre refers to a set of challenges, again, for overcoming certain obstacles. Game genre may be unlike the definition of arts, which, again, training in the perception of reality. And that was by Robert J. Belton. Next is, metaphorically speaking, game genres are artistic lenses with which to experience new game worlds, new perceptions of reality. Now remember, every game uh, provide a fantasy game world. So when we travel through it, we have to suspend our disbelief and enjoy uh, that game by allowing our imagination to roam. So in that case, that is why it's called a game world. And we're inside it and we're enjoying it. Now, I'm going to talk very lightly about certain genres. There are hundreds of genres to talk about, but I just want to go over lightly about the popular ones that you might not be aware of. The first type that we might be playing in RG MOOC headquarters is the platformer. And this kind, you're, you're probably familiar with this. Um, it's a subgenre of action game. These games involve traveling between platforms by jumping. Very occasionally, other means have substituted for jumping, like swinging or bouncing, but these are considered variations on the same mechanic. So think Mario. Think how often you had to make Mario jump through hoops to conquer those obstacles. Next one that's quite popular is called the RPG, which stands for role-playing games. Um, these kind of games mostly cast the player in the role of one or more adventurers who specialize in specific skill sets, such as melee, combat, or casting magic spells, while progressing through a predetermined storyline. So story is key 
an RPG. Many involve maneuvering these characters through an overworld, usually populated with monsters that allows access to more important game locations such as towns, dungeons, and castles. Third kind we're talking about is interactive fiction. This one is a little bit harder to grasp. Interactive fiction, often abbreviated as IF, I -F, is software simulating environments in which players use text commands to control characters and influence the environment. In another way of explaining interactive fiction, the choices you make in the game alters the uh, direction of your storyline. So they are very interesting because they are determined by the player, which is you. Uh, last one um, is strategy. Okay, and this is another one that we'll be using a lot at, RP, uh, at RG MOOC headquarters. Strategy focuses on gameplay, requiring careful and skillful thinking and planning in order to achieve victory. In most strategy video games, says Andrew Rowlings, the player is given a godlike view of the game world, indirectly controlling the units under his command. Now I know what you're thinking. It sounds a lot like chess, and this is associated with chess. So we will be playing quite a few of, uh, game titles that are strategy based. Okay. Now as a reminder, in order to complete this brief, you need to complete four directives. First, review some but not all of the intel provided. The strategy is to develop an in-depth understanding of some of the intel. What this video provided for you is a mere introduction to the material that you might encounter. So please keep that in mind. Two. Play one or more digital games assigned. Play the game just long enough to understand its meaning in relation to the intel. And what we mean by that is if a game is going to take you more than 10 hours to play, we really don't want you to waste 10 hours playing that game. We want you to get at least one or two hours in just so you can get a feel of the game. Once you understand what the game is doing, then you understand how to complete step three, Col uh, complete one or more directive co-op based on the intel. And four, lastly, you're going to join a live debriefing of the intel. At the live debriefing, all the agents will be there and we will chat about what we have learned from our games, from the intel, and what you have discovered on your own. Okay, so I have to tell you at this point, good luck. Here's me signing off. If you have any question, again, you want to return to RG MOOC headquarters, it's bit.ly slash RG MOOC course.